So I've continued flying my sailplane here at Warner Springs and just going solo right now. I've been checked out with a couple of instructors and I'm given a solo time for about one to two weeks and then I check back in with an instructor. And this day I got to go up about three times and really doing everything by myself, even getting the sailplane prepared, doing a pre-flight just like any other aircraft, going around and making sure that everything uh, doesn't fall apart on me. And just like in general aviation, these planes are pretty old. Um, they certainly have their annual as well as regular maintenance, keeps them uh, flyable and uh, in good shape. But they're old, <laughs> just like when I learned in the Cessna 152, 172s. These are all back in the 70s. So uh, yeah, there are some new sailplanes, but I have not had the privilege of uh, being able to fly one. The instrumentation is also very basic. No glass panel here. Airspeed indicator, altimeter, vario, brakes, trim, and a control stick. So with my checklist complete and making sure I haven't missed anything, uh, we now pull the sailplane over to the launch area. Uh, pretty easy to move on your own unless you get dug in like the ground is real soft, but again, I can do this all on my own. It's great to have somebody helping you, uh, somebody that can walk the wing and get that one wing off the ground, it makes things a little smoother. So on this particular launch, I did have somebody walking the wing. Uh, he'll also help with the takeoff, keeping the wings level. And also, he can help check for traffic, uh, something I can do before getting in. But once in that cockpit, I'm a little bit limited. So that really helps, too. Again, just really keeping things as safe as possible. cockpit is snug but comfortable. The seat belts are a little bit of a pain to get on correctly, but you know, that's the worst thing, then that's not so bad. Uh, I'll also signal the tow plane. I have a tow plane, a number, that he'll correspond to my sailplane. I'll also give him a heads up of uh, what I want to do. In this case, I'm going to go straight up and do a standard tow, and that's going to be about 3,000 feet. So on this particular launch, my helper is going to hook me into the tow plane, gives me time to go through my pre-flight. Uh, I have it all written down. It's also in a little placard on this sailplane. Pretty basic stuff, but again, something you don't want to overlook. Uh, you want to be as efficient as possible. There could be other people waiting to take off. Checking the altimeter, my seat belts, uh, he'll do a cable check here. Controls, canopy clothes, wind direction, dive brakes, and so on. But also the next thing I want to consider on this particular day is what emergency procedures am I going to employ if that tow line breaks? And that can change depending on the uh, wind, uh, the wind speed, direction. Uh, first 100 feet, 200 feet, 300 feet, so on. I'll know exactly what to do if that tow line does break. Okay, so we're ready to go. Uh, we'll look for traffic. The wing helper will give me a thumbs up. I'll give him a thumbs up back and say, yeah, looks good. 
Uh, I'll give a little rudder waggle here, and we're going to take off. One of the procedures that I'll have to do for the examiner is called boxing the wake, and that's basically doing a square around the tow plane, keeping out of the tow plane's wake, which can be quite rough, and you do lose a lot of control if you ever get uh, behind that wake. So I'm climbing to around 3,000 feet AGL, and for the last 800 feet, uh, the tow plane will straighten out and I'll be directly behind him. Once I'm directly behind him, I'll start the procedure. I'll first drop down through the wake and you're going to see here it gets pretty rough as I go through the wake right there. I'll pause there for around four seconds and then I'll slowly ease over staying at that particular altitude from the tow plane off to the left. And the whole trick is just to stay on this square. Don't ease back into the tow plane. Once I'm in that position, I'll go to the next corner. And again, you don't want to ease back into the tow plane. That's a real common mistake and something I did the first couple of times. So you stay outside the tow plane. Again, above that wake, you just cross over to the right side. And again, you can see we're just outlining this box. Stay there for a few seconds. Drop back down. For a few seconds, you get the idea. And then once I get back underneath the tow plane, again, you don't want to ease up because then you'll go right into that wake. Now, here's the tricky part <laughs> if you don't go up smoothly but fast enough, you will lose control of the sailplane once you hit that wake. So, here we're going to hit it. You can see that, and you want to go right through that. It's a lot of fun uh, getting a little better at it. And now I'm a little above 3,000 AGL, and I released. If I had to criticize myself here, I didn't really check the right side of my aircraft before I turned after the release. So something that I'll have to make sure I do next time. You really want to check for traffic. So at 1,500 feet AGL, I went through my pre-landing checklist. Basically, it includes like most aircraft, the gear, uh, in this case it's down and fixed. Uh, it does not retract. I do not have flaps in this aircraft. I look at the wind, wind direction. It's pretty calm right now. It does get a little blustered later on in the day for my last flight, but calm now. Uh, I do a trim for a certain airspeed, which in this aircraft is 45 miles per hour. I look for traffic, such as other aircraft taken off, that tow plane, other sailplanes, and uh, looking at the spoilers, make sure they work, and now I'm ready to start my approach. So I've been up for about 20 minutes, and unless I catch a thermal, that's, that's about as long as I can fly. And On this particular flight, I did get a few little areas where I didn't drop as much, <laughs> but no thermals, no lift, and that's to be expected. This is not the time of the season, and this is a little bit early in the day anyway. But I'm now on the downwind. You can see the uh, runway there off my left side. 
And the whole idea, again, as I explained in the past, is just do a stabilized approach, just like you would with really any other aircraft, whether it's paramotors, paragliders, and especially general aviation with an engine. Uh, you just want to really be stabilized with your airspeed, uh, in this case, my distance from the runway, and so on. So I've just turned a left base and I've got half spoilers in. My inclination to always be a little high. One is that I found that uh, it's always nice to be a little bit higher than lower. Uh, I have half spoilers. I put in full spoilers. There is an area with the telephone wires and trees going right across the approach end uh, right after those trees. So I like to get over that with plenty of height. And also if I put full spoilers, I can always slip it in. I love slipping the aircraft. It is fun. <laughs> what can I say? And it can drop very, very quickly. Um, so it can put you right over any obstructions and then drop in and then you can just let off the slip. Maybe let off a little bit of the brakes. So here goes. nice. I felt pretty good about that one. Okay. So here's the same landing from a different perspective. Uh, again, you can see I'm on my left base now. Uh, runway is just over my left wing, so I'll be turning to final here pretty soon. At this point, I do have half spoilers. As I said, you know, if I'm high, I can always put in more, spo more spoilers. If I get low, I can let out the spoilers. So I have a lot more options just being a little bit higher than lower. And as I said, I love slipping it in. So with full spoilers, I can slip it in over any obstructions and uh, you'll see that wires right there, right below the aircraft right now. Plenty of altitude above it. Now I start at my slip and it will just drop right into my aiming point and then I'll slowly let out that slip and land. The whole idea is to just land on the main and the tail wheel at the same time. So let's see how it goes. This is my second landing of the day. I'm going to go up for one more. The wind is starting to come up now, which is nice because obviously on days where there's thermals, there's activity, there's instability in the air, yeah, the wind is going to blow and you got to get used to that. Uh, real nice, stable, smooth conditions. Well, there's probably not a lot of lift out there. But this is great for practice and obviously getting me a lot more confident with uh, my landings, my takeoffs. And uh, so we're going to go one more time.
yes, there is some work involved, uh, but again, my, my, my adrenaline is going pretty high right now. I'm just having a great time. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, I don't want to keep that tow plane waiting. I want to be as efficient as possible while still staying safe. So this time the right wing will go down and that's the one uh, on the runway side. I'm also going to be hooking up the cable by myself uh, because I don't have a helper this time. Either for the hookup, I give it a good tug, make sure I got that in there well. Uh, I'm also going to be taken off with one wing down, which I found is not as difficult as I thought it would be. Uh, just a matter of getting the wing up as quickly as possible and then keeping things stable. Wing runners are nice, but in this case, uh, I'm happy to do it without one because I need the practice. So another takeoff this is my last takeoff of the day. There's a little bit more of a headwind, probably about 10 miles per hour. So obviously we're going to climb a little faster. Also coming in for a landing, I'm going to be hitting a little bit of a wall, so I've got to be careful. Uh, I've got enough altitude and also I'm not too far uh, when I turn base. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the rest of this. My camera ran out of batteries and also I was told that they didn't want me to use the camera I had inside uh, with a suction cup because uh, it really hurts the plexiglass or the fiberglass in this case and uh, I guess it's really hard to get that stuff these days. So I have to think of a new way to hook up uh, my point of view camera. But in the meantime, it's been loads of fun. Uh, I hope this has been interesting for you guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next time. I'm actually gonna transition to what they call the Schweitzer 126. It's a single place uh, glider that is like a little sports car, I'm told. Uh, this is a Chevy I'm driving. Yeah, I'm gonna probably be something like a little Miata or something a lot more uh, maneuverable, a lot more speedy, and uh, much more sensitive. So that'll be a, another adventure. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care and uh, safe flying out there.